Um, we're going to try and answer an impossible question tonight. What is drawing? Um, I mean, a couple of things I think all of you know. It's like drawing is pretty much all you guys are doing every day at the moment, apart from a brief thing to go home, maybe buy some food and sleep. But is what we're doing here really drawing? First thing is, you know, we're here, we're, we're, we're going through, let's say, an academic preparation in drawing. So this probably looks like hideously familiar to a, a few of you already. Um, on the right, we've got a drawing by Tintoretto. This is um, kind of, let's say, a different version of the next stage. So Tintoretto, for those of you who know his paintings, um, this, is, this was his version of a cast drawing. So he, rather than doing plaster casts, would draw from, from bronze statues. He was interested in the way that light lifted off things. And so a lot of his paintings are figures in very dark, murky backgrounds with sort of slashes of white and violent color. So rather than looking for, let's say, masses, he was interested in the, the glints of light on things. But still, this idea of learning to draw or an artist using drawing as a form of research by studying the art of the past, whether it's you know, part of an arm from a classical sculpture or Michelangelo. This is actually a Michelangelo. This is part of the, the Medici Chapel here. It's a very foreshortened sculpture. So we've got drawing as a, as a means of learning, like an academic preparation. And that's a pretty familiar form of drawing, I think, for all of you. The other thing is we're here, we're here in Florence. And if you, if, you go to the, if you stand outside the academia, um, and particularly the building to the left of it, what you'll see is above the door, there are, there are three interjoined rings. And it was the, the Accademia degli Belli Arti del Disegno. And the three rings, one ring represents painting, one ring represents architecture, the other ring represents sculpture. And the fact they're all linked is they're linked through drawing. And the word for, the word for drawing in Italian is disegno. And it has a, has a double meaning. It means literally drawing is in the physical act of making a shape. But there's also the hugely important thing of drawing as a, as a secondary part, or not even secondary, an equal part, which is the idea of designing or arranging. So you know, the sensitive translation of nature, but also you know, arrangement, composition, you know, playfulness as well. I just want you to think about all the different types of drawing that occur. For example, this is a Giulio Romano, a Mannerist Italian artist on the, on the right. This is actually this is a, a Roman, um, part of a Roman temple that was excavated in Florence. You know, drawing is also the deciding how big these letters are going to be, the spacing between the letters, you know, how thick the things are. Draw, drawing is making the ram, deciding how many different pieces of um, you know, foliage are going to be in this kind of hanging pendant piece here. So there's so many different types of drawing to consider. We're, you know, what we're looking at and what we're doing on a daily basis here is really quite a narrow part of it. Drawing again, you know, not just the leaf, but the space between the leaves. Or on this other side, this is something called Pietra Dura, which is a sort of a Florentine um, speciality. The actual act of not, not just the design for this in the first place, but even to actually be able to cut these different pieces in a precise and specific shape is a form of drawing. You know, if I was talking to Mitch, who runs the sculpture program earlier, he was, say, he was saying that the more he sculpts, the more he feels that literally is just everything he does is a form of, is a form of drawing. So I mean, the, first, the, the first sort of job this evening is just to expand our sense of what drawing is. Um, does anyone know what this is? Does anyone recognize this? Um, okay, this was made in um, what's now Nigeria um, in, you know, rough, in around the year sort of 1480. Um, and at this point, um, you know, it's called, it's called, called, there's a series of these sculptures that they're now called the Ife heads because this was the, the place where they came from. Um, it's just people assumed for a long time that the that this tribe had been trading with maybe ancient Greece or Rome or had some contact. There was absolutely none at all. Um, but again, even just extending our notion of drawing, just actually the idea of designing and arranging these lines on the face, again, is a form of drawing. Drawing is also playfulness. You know, drawing can actually just be fun, you know, which again, is, might be a hard thing to believe when you're um, on week four or five of a bog drawing. This is a Benini. Um, portrait of his, of his um, friend and patron, Scipione Borghese. And you have to be on pretty good terms in the 17th century to, to draw a cardinal this way. I mean, the risk of being you know, decapitated or tortured, or um, it was an offense, so it's called les majestés, to offend someone in power. Um, and that crime existed in 17th century Rome. So you know, unless you really know the guy pretty well, you're taking a risk to draw a powerful public figure in that way. Um, can anyone guess who that is? Sorry? No, it's a real figure, it's a historical figure. Yeah, it's Queen Victoria. 
Um, and this was drawn by John Singer Sargent, who saw her going past his lunch table and quickly just sketched it onto the um, you know, bit of paper he had lying around. So this is you know, in the carriage. So this is drawing as fun as well. You know, dr we're here making these very serious, very raw drawings. But I think the other thing is that it should actually just be an enjoyable activity to pick up a pencil and paper. Um, and you know, these are you know, Benini and Sargent in different ways were some of the more kind of, let's say, serious grand manner artists who've ever existed. And you know, this is the kind of thing they did too. At the end of each trimester here, for those of you who are new, there's a, there's a final critique where you bring everything you've done. Um, and to begin with, the focus is very much on you know, the serious projects. But over time, it's so gratifying and so important that students begin to bring their own things, both serious projects, playful things. And it actually becomes quite disturbing if you're getting towards the end of a student's time here and they're not bringing things that they're doing outside. Um, it's very difficult to kickstart that impulse from nothing after nine trimesters. Um, and you know, just to see a, see a student sketchbook where there are you know, developed drawings, but also the idea of just drawing for fun, drawing to play, um, to me is an incredibly important thing to, to see. Um, and you know, here are two historical examples of it as well. Um, I think the other thing is just to think about in terms of drawing as well is that you know, the things you're doing now, there's this big question, is sort of student work art? Um, my own feeling is, and please don't take this the wrong way, no. Um, but what you are learning to do, and this is really important, is your, all the drawings you're doing, and even you know, the first bar drawings as well, they contain artistic decisions. So you're learning to make artistic decisions, and that is ultimately what works of art are made out of. And this is the joy of one of these sheets, I think, by, by Raphael, is, again, that sense of play. And we can move a little bit closer as well. Um, but these are, this, this is a series of artistic decisions. Um, you know, changing the angle of a head, changing the shape of the top of a head, changing the tilt of a face. We can go back and see the whole thing. Um, sorry, this is not Raphael, this is, this is Leonardo da Vinci, sorry. Um, and you can just see him, you can just see this kind of fertile, curious, restless brain at work over this whole sheet. Get up, you know, get, get back a little bit closer again. You know, possibly some kind of pencil work underneath. We can see ghosts of heads that we couldn't see before under here. Um, but it's this restless thing. And so the Florentine tradition, it's, it's, this is, it's so nice that Simona's sitting at the back here because in this tradition we have, um, which to some extent is, let's say, it's an American school with a, a grounding in the French academic tradition, but we're here in Florence. And there's a Florentine link through painters like Anigoni. Um, and for those of you who are in Simona's program, which I think is all of you here, you're, it's a real privilege to, for you to be taught by someone who has that direct link to the Florentine tradition of drawing, and the last great exponent of it in the city was um, Pietro Anigoni. And this way of working through a problem on paper is very much the Florentine way. You know, if you get to, up to Venice, Titian, he'll evolve the painting on the canvas, but the Florentine way is rooted in this idea of disegno. Titian draws too, but this idea of working out the problems on paper, um, not completely, but to a large extent before the painting, before the painting or sculpture starts. If we, if we talk about drawing, this is a very easy thing. You know, we know this is a drawing, if that makes sense. We're going to look at a few, like, what is drawing now in terms of materials, the appearance of the thing. So this is a drawing by Thomas Lawrence, who's a British painter at the end of the 18th, early 19th century.